in this one I'll be going through some of my best writing tips and also some of my best book marketing tips as a newbie author, as someone who's quite new to this world of publishing. So I've loved writing and storytelling since I was about eight years old and my first book attempts were scribbled out conglomerations of stories I loved at the time like Goosebumps, Animorphs, Harry Potter, Mallory Towers, anything about human relationships, especially if it had a bit of magic or fantasy in there. And then when I was a teenager, I mostly just wrote like short stories and poems, all of which were extremely miserable and reflective of that time of my life. And then when I was 19 and very, very depressed, as an escape, I started to write a high fantasy novel called Lore. And as I worked my way through that book, I would upload the chapters onto this website that used to exist at the time called Authonomy. It was a HarperCollins website for writers where you would get feedback from random people around the world. And my book got to the top five on the website and then it got quite a bit of attention. I got offered a publishing deal by an indie publisher. And I remember thinking like, this idea is too big for me right now. I wasn't able to do it justice and I wasn't really that happy with the work but I was still really excited obviously and my dad brought the book contract that I was sent to be looked over turns out it was a terrible deal and I would have been signing my entire life away like you know first refusal on all future works that that level of bad <laughs> and we didn't have the money at the time to you know pay someone to work out a great contract or anything like that and I was tempted by the idea of querying at the time, but then I went off to college and I didn't have time to think about the book, let alone to write all of my time. My writing time was focused on writing essays for college and my thesis, and then I started YouTube, obviously, so sometimes I would turn there to YouTube to be my little creative outlet, you know? And when I was 25, this channel started to do really well and I attracted an audience from all over the world of mostly women between like 15 and 30, that kind of age group. And the Irish branch of a massive global publisher, Hachette, reached out to me and asked if I would want to write a kind of memoir slash life guide of advice and stuff like that for teenagers, which was mostly my audience at the time. So essentially just kind of condense my channel and dive deeper into topics and turn it into a book. And I did that. That was my first book, Fully Functioning Human Almost. I agreed to do this on the basis that if it did well, that they would consider publishing my fiction and consider letting me pitch ideas. And we made that kind of verbal agreement and that was that. So this book topped the Irish book charts and two years later it was featured in official state exam papers in Ireland, which is a really cool thing to be able to say. But like looking back on it makes me cringe. I even kind of said, that I knew that would happen in, in the intro section. Like I have grown so much since I wrote this, but you know, I was writing it for young people. And I look at it fondly because it was my leg in the door and I get asked so much if having an online presence, an established audience helps with realizing a dream like this, you know, if you want to write for money. And my answer is fucking yes, it does. It, absolutely helps. We'll get to that later, but I'd be a liar if I didn't acknowledge the role that this channel played in me kind of stepping into this other side career. Then last year, a lot of you guys were around for this. I published my debut novel, If Only, about a woman who can glimpse parallel versions of her life. So there is a bit of magic in there, but it's a contemporary. It features a mad drunk Irish granny and it explores body image and love and friendships and grief and it has sold all around the world. Recently sold thousands of copies in America via ebook to like people who don't watch my channel and stuff. So this book was only really gonna ever be relevant for my audience, like my face is plastered on the cover and stuff, you know? In one year, this book has sold more copies than this book has in three years. So we're, we're on the right track. I couldn't be more delighted with how warmly my first fiction novel was received. And I kind of want to preface this video by saying if you want something badly enough and you work at it and you work at it and you keep visualizing the shit out of it and you keep putting yourself in the right situations and if you talk to the right people and you just keep at the forefront of your mind, I truly believe something will come of your big dream, even if it isn't 
writing. I'm currently writing my second novel. It's a kind of a secret garden for adults type vibe. It's about the healing of two sisters who do not get on at all. And you know, there's plenty of sex and magic and I'm really enjoying that. And that's what prompted um, this video idea. In this one, I'll be going through some of my best writing tips and also some of my best book marketing tips as a newbie author, as someone who's quite new to this world of publishing. As a little bonus, I have a crap ton of signed copies of my novel to give away. So I'm gonna pick 20 of the commenters from down below. All you have to do is comment, I'm in, and email the email address. That's the pinned comment down below and it's in the description box as well. So, so I'm not gonna repeat all of the stuff that you already know that everyone says to you if you want to write, you know. Read a lot and make sure you actually write instead of constantly thinking and talking about writing and character sketches and mood boards, like you have to sit down and write and you have to write a lot of shitty, smelly shit before you write anything that you're really happy with. That you should start with writing what you know and using your own feelings, experiences, friends as raw materials. Also, I'm not gonna tell you where I get ideas from because I don't fucking know and if you are ever kind of finding yourself like what should I write about and, and that you don't have ideas just sit with yourself and ask yourself why you want to write like do you have something you really want to say or is it just to be able to say you wrote a book or is it for money like writing is not the business <laughs> for earning money it's a very fulfilling industry but it's um yeah like the majority of people who write have to have another job as well so it's a lot of time and dedication and sitting at a table or in your bed with your laptop or whatever way you write yes yeah, so we'll move on to like how i write and um hopefully this helps some of you first thing i want to talk about is environment door closed closed nobody interrupting i don't talk to anyone about my book until I've got a first draft that I don't detest um, and I usually do hate the first draft. <laughs> Not thinking at all about publication or you know the, the target market, like writing for the market, like is it going to do well in the current market? I just don't think about that kind of stuff. I heard, I think it was Neil Gaiman said, there is no market, you know, there was no one anywhere in the world sat down and thought, a series of unfortunate events is just what we need right now. Like stuff just happens and does well and I would much rather write something that does well and succeeds on its own rather than writing the coattails of something really similar. And I'm always gonna carry that kind of attitude. I would just really hate to be called, oh, this Melly Murphy is like the new so-and-so. What I'm saying is write what you wanna write and while writing, I think it's stupid to get really caught up on like what's doing well. You've got your door closed, you've got snacks, you've got water. And then what I do is I work off of my MacBook and I open up two documents. And in one document, I mind dump everything, anything relevant to the book writing process. And then in the other document, that's where I actually write and I will just have them both open side by side so I can flip between them and I know everyone has their own way of doing it but that's just what works best for me because for me putting a story together is kind of like making a jigsaw puzzle I don't just write um, linearly every time I finish like a new chapter or something I'll email it to myself that's how I back up I don't use a hard drive or anything because I'm shit the next point is kind of tied into that but it's to figure out if you're a discovery writer or a plotter. Some people call discovery writing pantsing. I just think that's a really stupid sounding word, so I'm not gonna say pantsing, it's daft. But yeah, plotter versus pantser. I kind of fall somewhere in the middle of these two. I like to have a general idea of where I'm going. So, you know, a general beginning, middle, end. And then certain scenes I'll have just imagined happening on the timeline. So all that goes into my first word document with just random character sketches or storyboards or timelines, subplots or like certain phrases I might think of and then I'll be like, I want that person to say that to that person. And also research goes in here because like the weirdest thing about writing, you'll find yourself looking up such random shit on Google or like buying books about local flora and fauna. Like it's just mad how much stuff there is. So I have to, that, document serves as like my second brain. Everything in there is about the book. And the thing is where I write the actual book, like 
I don't know how I'm getting from point A to point B, point B to point C. All I know is that there is a point B and there is a point C and I and that helps me to sew together the book and the idea and it also lets the characters lead the story so that they feel real and so that I actually enjoy the process. Like, that's why I did say this before, I didn't enjoy writing this. I knew exactly what had to go in here, whereas the fun of writing for me is like not knowing. Not knowing if I'm gonna really like the protagonist or not, not knowing how certain scenes will unfold and what the feeling will be that I have attached to that scene or like what music I'll have playing in the background, you know? That's another part of environment. I always listen to soundtracks um, while I write. But yeah, I love discovery writing with a general outline. I'll do my bit of research on plot structure before I start to see which kind of shape, I suppose, will suit the story I'm trying to tell. Um, Cause obviously plot and story are two very different things. It's just something that happens like writing, it's such a weird, strange thing to try and describe to anyone who's never been interested in doing it, but it's it's so all-consuming and you really get into a state of flow. I think that's why I love it so much because I get really distracted from all of the noise of the world and I get really sucked into these people who don't really exist, but then they, they do feel like real people, I start to really care about them as, as the story unfolds and it's very satisfying when you figure something out, like you're like, how do I get this across or how do I bring them from this point to this point? And when you figure that out, you're like, I'm a genius. <laughs> it's so stupid, but I think it's a very valuable and like beneficial hobby to have, even if you're not after getting published. But... So yeah, I give myself a roadmap. Another thing is that I try and remove anything that's not really necessary. So if you have a bunch of shit happening in a story and it's not serving the plot or it's not, it's not moving things forward, it's just there, I cut it and you have to kill your darling sometimes, you know? It might be a great idea, a great scene, but it just might not work for that story. Just think like, would I read this? Would I go to a bookshop, see this book, pick it out, like the blurb, actually sit down to read it. And then would I sit through like 40 minutes of two chapters that just don't need to be there. So I always ask myself, if this scene didn't happen, could the next scene still happen without this scene? And that is the driving force always for me, um, with fiction anyway now. So another thing that I learned kind of years ago, purple prose, so like cutting, flowery language, too many adverbs, like it's just weak. You don't have to dress your writing. I feel like as I get older, I'm I'm really appreciating clean prose and reading poetry helps with this and reading people who have um, a really musical quality to their prose and their writing without having these ridiculous words that they've found on a synonym website. You know, sometimes all you need is the word said. It's wild and I just like lots of short words and varying up sentence length and sentence structure, but kind of keeping it, keeping the pacing just like. When I write a paragraph, I immediately read back over it and I'll fix it. But sometimes I'll read it back the next day and I'll, I'll be like, what? What? It's so bad. Like, I, and then I'll either delete it or just redo the whole thing. Like you need to sit on your work sometimes to be able to see it from the perspective of a reader, if that makes sense. The first paragraph of the prologue of my work in progress um, goes like this. The idea burst into Mulholland's mind, a great spark in the night time, and he's certain it's June's doing. In life, his wife always showed him the way, and even now, with the invisible ink of the essence of her, she's penning the title of his next book, four years after her burial in Ardla Cemetery, where white orchids decorate her grave. So I kept that all very like clean, and that's kind of what I want to do, especially like going forward. I tried with this as well. I still feel like there's little sections that I could have done a bit better. That could have been a lot more, but I just want people who pick my book up on a shelf to like immediately be absorbed in what's happening and not in the writing, not in the words, not in the like, ooh, look at this incredibly long description of the sunset. Like, fuck. I don't have the attention span for that kind of level of detail of things anymore and I, a lot of people don't. The kinds of books that have become bestsellers have changed, but I'll even find it now. If I pick up, I'm just looking at my bookshelf. If I pick up 
Lord of the Rings now, I really struggle to read it because it's just so... Duh. And I don't imagine writing something that kind of dense would be super fun. So, you know, that's, that's just me but this is my video on my channel, so yes. Um, anyway, next point is to identify your ideal reader. I don't know why this helps so, so much, but for me, like I've always just had so many different book ideas and I definitely, I can tell you this now, if I didn't have this channel, an audience of people who are quite similar to me and experienced the same kind of issues that I have in the past and stuff, that's how they found my channel in, in the first place. This book would not exist, um, if only wouldn't exist. I probably would have focused on writing young adults, it would have been a lot more fantasy. But for me, because the publishing deal was kind of on the basis that I write for my ready-made audience, um, and also Hachette Ireland kind of, they publish adult fiction, you know, so I realized very quickly that I have an opportunity here. I have a window to get published. I have all of my life to write all of the other books that I have in my head and stuff like that. But I, this is my time to practice. This is my time to make the contacts and show what I can do and show that I can shift books off shelves. You know, I pitched a few ideas to my editor and um, I think one of them was a modern retelling of Romeo and Juliet, except it's lesbians. Stuff that they did not go for. Um, but I had my YouTube viewer as my ideal reader in mind and that made the process so much easier. It's very intimidating, the idea of finishing like a 90,000 word novel, like that's a massive, massive undertaking. And for my first stab at it, where I knew I actually had a deal, I thought, right, I'm just going to imagine all of the girls that I have met on the street, all of the girls I've met at meetups, at conventions, and all of the people that comment on my videos and send me messages about their issues and what they're struggling with. I'm gonna intertwine a lot of all that into the story, into the characters, into the bones of the book. And thinking stuff like, I wonder what he or she will feel when he or she reads this paragraph or this chapter or this section. Like, Next point is have a deadline. Even if you're not writing for an editor who's waiting on your fecking big mind fart of a first draft, like have a deadline, give yourself a deadline so you're held accountable. Tell family maybe or or a friend or like a writer's group or um, announce it on your social media and have like a countdown and be sharing the progress. Like when you're held accountable, it's the same with anything, like when you want to give up something or you know, if you want to undergo a health and fitness transformation and when you have people kind of waiting to hear updates and curious about your journey, like you're way more likely to finish it, you're way more likely to get there because I know a lot of people who have multiple unfinished half starts of books in their drawer and I just never wanted to let myself become one of those people. Um, I said this on Instagram the other day but Finished is better than perfect. Yeah, the thing is, if you spend 15 years on that one book, that one story, and then you finish it, it might just not go down well. Whereas if you focus like fuck and finish maybe five books in a decade, one of them might be a diamond rather than a lump of coal, you know? And it's like with anything, you have to practice a lot. I think having something to work towards or like giving yourself little prizes <laughs> like I don't mean gold stickers here but just treating yourself when you reach milestones like 20,000 words 50,000 words or like part one part two even little treats after every chapter and um, it's it's just a really useful way to go about it in my, in my opinion and um, and then I want to talk a bit about book marketing here now so obviously you know with the title I have sold like about 20,000 copies but it could be more I haven't chatted to my editor about that in a few weeks but we did have this kind of surge of sales when there was like a promotion on and it's really hard to collect all of the data as well because there's so many different formats of of the books but I'm really really proud of that number because like I know a lot of people who they say to earn out your advance is a big deal and to hit like say 10,000 per book is like a 
quite a little mini milestone of its own and because I am not known in the writer's world and because I am first and foremost known as an online creator or an influencer or whatever word you want to stick on my face, I was always going to struggle to break through the, you know, even here in Ireland, you know, you'll see, say, Graham Norton will have a book on the shelves and he's a beautiful writer, but most people know him as Graham Norton from TV. When you're writing and you want people to read your book and to just enjoy the story and not necessarily associate it with you, that's much harder when they already know a lot about you and they know what you look like and they know some of your life experiences and they know your humor. They're gonna kind of see you or hear your voice when they're reading. Most authors who you've read books by, you might not even know what they look like. You might never have seen an interview with them. You might not follow them on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Not going to be so apparent when they're drawing from their real life or whatever. To you, it's just a book. It's like, oh, I love this book. But <laughs> I feel like it is, it is quite difficult when you're going the opposite way and you've established a presence online. You're trying to cut out a little area for yourself within the bookshop, you know. First and foremost, the cover. The cover is so important and if you are self-publishing you have so much more control over this than someone like me um, who is traditionally published and I can tell you hand on heart all of my covers are not the covers I would have chosen and that is not a slight whatsoever on the publishers because obviously they know what they're doing and they know the market that they're trying to market to. Obviously it still has sold well but these two covers are super pretty. Um, The first two I wasn't as much of a fan of as these two covers. I looked at these covers and I thought that's a gorgeous cover, it's stunning. It's just not the cover of my book. It doesn't really scream, you know magic necklace and parallel universes. It's more women's fiction, you know, and yeah, and it's just, it's something that you have to, sometimes you just have to trust that the book marketers and the book designers like know what they're doing and that's their job. I'm a perfectionist and I'm a control freak and I found it really difficult to not have a final say over that and not have much input really. Um, but we all know the cover matters so much. This is the point at which you look at the market, you look at what in your genre is doing well, what kind of covers would you, do you pick up in the bookshop? Even though that cover isn't what I had in my mind, I never spent any money on ads like Facebook advertising or Amazon advertising. The amount it sold was partially because of the cover because not everyone who bought the book was a follower of mine, you know? So the cherry blossom tree on the cover is relevant, um, representing the fragility of life and all of the different branches and directions our life can go in. And um, it's a tree that's in the book. It was planted in memory of the protagonist's mother who died when she was very young and who is very significant in her story arc. And now we're gonna talk a bit more about building an author platform and having an online presence. I mentioned this earlier, but it's just, it's huge. And I don't just mean because, oh, if you do that, then you'll definitely get a book deal and it'll definitely sell loads. Not the case at all. There have been YouTubers with far more monthly viewers than me who have published books and they have completely flopped and then they didn't get any further book deals and then go in the opposite direction there have been authors who've sold millions of books setting up youtube channels to promote their stuff making it big on instagram and you know even like people like marianne keys she talks about makeup and stuff on her instagram and she has a youtube channel but she has had so much success already with her books um but obviously like she's a writer she wants to keep sharing her stories and having a presence online enables her to interact with her audience and enables her to reach new people if you're starting from scratch and you're wanting to um build an audience you know try and think what is it about me that is different like what about my personality stands out yes you can use all of the popular hashtags and stuff like that but um everyone Everyone that I follow, there's just something about them that's different and, you know, not copying other people. It's the same when it comes to your writing, like putting a lot of yourself, spilling yourself into it is really important. Posting quality content consistently is massive. Um, and you know, I post all sorts of stuff on this channel, like from, you know, recently I've been talking about my pregnancy because I'm like six months pregnant and, and that, but you know, again, Mammies, they'll be part of my target audience. Mammies are multifaceted human beings with lots of interests. So like, I don't make my content all about books and, and that kind of thing. Um, I do wanna do more stuff around writing and books, 
but I just share a lot of me, um, a lot of different sides of me online and that has, has really helped and I think that helps other writers as well, like some of them share a lot of their political opinions, Stephen King, big into Twitter, like he'll post out reviews of Netflix shows he's enjoying or like jokes about Trump <laughs> and just just anything to connect with the people that you're going to be selling your book to and then you have to have a website I'm not going to go on about this but you you have to have a website if you want to self-publish a book or publish a book imagine you're going to go and buy a Hoover for your house and the brand doesn't have a website like you just get this dodgy feeling like, oh, is it legit? Is, you know, you don't even need a fancy website. It just needs to be really basic and simple with just a little about me section and a contact me section and a link to where your books are and then whatever else you want on there. My one is so plain, so basic, but I think it's really important to, to have something that legitimizes you. <laughs> and getting creative in, in the promotion, like with say giveaways, for example. Giveaways, in my opinion, should only ever really be like a source of thanks to celebrate something like a milestone or whatever. And like not as a means to reach a milestone, not as a means to gain an audience. Because if you ever see those people on Instagram where they're having some big, massive beauty giveaway, say, and you end up following them to just try and like win this giveaway. It's rare that you'll stick around and be really interested in their stuff, you know? Giveaways should be uplifting and fun as well. Like I did this poster giveaway. I hired an artist to create some art from my novel and then I printed out posters and I signed all those posters. And then people who pre-ordered the paperback edition of my book sent me an email and then I posted them out posters and Unfortunately, it all happened during the COVID disaster, so some of them haven't been able to be posted out yet because of stupid post office. But you know, like just do something a little bit different. Like don't only just give away copies of your book. Once you incentivize the giveaway in some way, so like people who enter either maybe have to have a copy of the book or if it's a YouTube video, like they have to like the video or leave a comment, like the little giveaway I did at the start of this video, like that will help promote the video in the algorithm, you know? So just get a little bit clever with that kind of thing. And finally, I wanted to say, you have to share your work. You have to offer up snippets here and there. Um, maybe you could do a reading online, like what I did. I would share little snippets under Instagram images or on my stories just to kind of spike people's interest or to kind of give them a little taster of what it is. Your work, if it has legs, like that that will help. It will draw people in. If the book is good, it will be promoted by other people. Like other people will go out of their way to tell people about it. They'll have it in their book clubs. They'll loan it to family and friends and they'll post reviews online and maybe share pictures of the book on their social media. And that's how books spread like wildfire. A couple of great examples of that from last year are Eleanor Oliphant is Completely Fine and The Flat Chair. Those two books completely just seemingly sprang out of nowhere and just did amazing. They did have amazing advertising campaigns obviously and they were really, gorgeous stories well written but the thing that catapults a book like that a lot of the time is um you know you're sharing bits of it and then people share bits of it they share their opinions on it they share quotes from it and stuff so yeah I hope I hope that video helps I know it was very waffly <laughs> I'm not I've not been making many videos during the coronavirus stuff I'm while I've been pregnant so I'm a bit out of practice but if you enjoyed it tell me that always is very encouraging. And um, if you want more videos on writing, please tell me, because I'm even scared uploading this one. I just feel like people are gonna be like, I don't give a shit. So yeah, happy reading and happy writing. And I'll see you in another video again very soon.